Paul Thomas Anderson is one of the most respected filmmakers of this generation, being nominated eight times at the Academy Awards and being the only person to win three director prizes from the three major international film festivals, Cannes, Venice and Berlin. On top of that, he has made some of the finest films of the past 30 years. In this video, I'll be talking about how Paul Thomas Anderson shoots a scene in his earlier films, from Hard Eight to Punch Drunk Love, and in part two, I'll be talking about how he shoots a scene in his later films, from There Will Be Blood to Phantom Thread. Anderson started making films in high school, with his first film being the Dirk Diggler story that he made at 18. This was the basis for his acclaimed film Boogie Nights. In 1993, he made Cigarettes and Coffee, a short based on Hard Eight, his first feature. He used gambling winnings, his girlfriend's credit card, as well as his college funds to make the film. It ended up screening at the 1993 Sundance Festival Shorts program, and it was there where he decided to expand the film into a feature. Consequently, he was invited to the 1994 Sundance Feature Film Program. During the production of Sydney, which was later retitled to Hard Eight, there was a lot of trouble regarding the edit and release of the movie. This is when Anderson got to work on Boogie Nights, his breakout film. As well as jumpstarting the careers of Mark Wahlberg and Julianne Moore, he was later nominated for Best Supporting Actress, whilst Anderson was nominated for Best Original Screenplay. Boogie Nights was a huge success, and this allowed Anderson to have full creative control over his next film, Magnolia, which like Boogie Nights, was an ensemble piece with intertwined storylines. He used the music of Amy Mann as a basis and inspiration for the film, and even commissioned her to write eight new songs for it, resulting in her getting a Best Original Song nomination at the Academy Awards. At the time of release, Anderson stated that, what I really feel is that Magnolia is, for better or worse, the best movie I'll ever make. In the early 2000s, Anderson stated that he wanted to work with Adam Sandler, which resulted in him making Punch Drunk Love in 2002, three years after the success of Magnolia. This film gave Sandler critical acclaim for his role as Barry Egan. This was also the first film away from his mainstream comedies. It also resulted in Anderson winning the Best Director Award at the 2002 Cannes Film Festival and a nomination for the prestigious Palme d'Or. Over the years, Paul Thomas Anderson has made a variety of films of varying genres, but he has several distinct trademarks when it comes to the cinematography of his films. Whether it's the use of colour to portray emotion, or the very long takes that he uses to keep the audience immersed in the scene, you will find his trademarks in every film that he has made. Paul Thomas Anderson is a master at setting the mood in a scene, and he mainly does this through his choice of colour and how it resembles what the character is feeling. He either does this through lighting or costume design. An example of this being in Hard Eight, where Samuel L. Jackson's character, Jimmy, wears a red coat to the casino, symbolising both power and danger in the character. Another example of this being in the beginning of the film, where we see John C. Riley's character in a blue jacket. In a film, Blue generally represents loneliness and isolation, but at the same time, it also illustrates trust and loyalty in a character, which is why we later see him in a dark blue shirt in the casino, once Sydney has taught him the way around a slot machine. It's rare for a P.T. Anderson scene to not have any movement in it, and Anderson does an amazing job at making sure that it is motivated. Whether it's to further develop a character, or set a scene, it always has a purpose. It's important for a shot to have motivation, otherwise it's just there to look pretty which can distract the audience from the story. And after all, that is the most important job for any cinematographer, is to tell a story through images. A simple example of motivation being in Boogie Nights, after we are first introduced to Eddie, we find ourselves in his bedroom, and as the camera does a 360 pan, we find out everything that we need to know about him in just one minute, and without a single word of dialogue. In the scene where Eddie encounters the drug dealers, we are kept very wide, and since the room is open, the characters feel quite small in the frame. There is also a theme of red throughout the room, with the rugs, flowers, paintings and even ashtrays being red, which can suggest violence and anger. As the scene becomes more tense, we become much tighter on the characters, and as the shootout happens, the camera movements become more frantic. Robert Ellswit's cinematography really helps portray what the characters are feeling at that specific moment. 
there are countless long takes in Magnolia, but the ones that really stand out to me are Tom Cruise's speeches, with some of them being almost three minutes long without a single cut. In this scene, we stay tight on Frank throughout the entire speech, yet it feels so natural due to the stable camera, and whilst they weren't using a geared head, they had an extremely talented operator. Of course, I couldn't go without mentioning the more famous long take at about the 40 minute mark, where we see Stanley Spectre arrive at the studio. The camera moves flawlessly through the set, following different actors on their way to the stage. With more complex movement, and how much more choreographed it was, it feels much more impressive than any of the other long takes in the film. There are many compelling scenes in Magnolia, but the scene in which Earl is on his deathbed is especially so. Again, it's a long take with a monologue from Tom Cruise, but I'd argue it's the most powerful scene in the whole film. The camera stays mainly static and only tilting to keep Cruise in frame. The shot has depth to it, in which we have Earl in the foreground, Frank in the midground, and Phil in the background. Even though Phil is out of focus, we can see his discomfort throughout the scene, and when we later cut to his reaction shot, we can see how much the speech is really affecting him. There is also no music in the first half of the scene, allowing the audience to focus on the dialogue and raw emotion that is taking place. Moving on to Punch Drunk Love, where we are again greeted with natural looking, yet incredible cinematography. Throughout the film, Barry is wearing a blue suit, which is an indication of loneliness, a theme throughout the film. Blue is also found in his office, and very plain apartment. This just goes to show that you can't have good and meaningful cinematography without having an exceptional production designer. Much like his other films, we follow the characters around using steadicams or dollies. We are even introduced to locations using this method. When using the dolly, it is either a controlled dolly in, where it feels natural, yet important, telling us to focus on the character, or his signature, Fast Dollies In, where we quickly fly towards the characters in a chaotic way. An example of meaning behind the shot being this famous frame from the film. We see Barry at his desk in the office, where the walls match his suit in a dark blue, which as I mentioned, indicate loneliness. We are also given the indication through the composition in the frame, where Barry is pushed all the way to the left of the shot and given minimal looking room. Throughout Anderson's films, we are told a lot about how the characters are feeling from the colours that we can see in the shot. Whether it's what they are wearing, or a light shining upon them, colour plays a huge part in the cinematography of his films. It's clear that he has a love of camera movement as well, as he is known for the long tracking shots in his films. He is also known to have used discombobulating camera movements, which make the audience feel disorientated. Most famously, is the opening shot from Boogie Nights. He also likes to let scenes play out, allowing characters to just exist in his worlds. Paul Thomas Anderson has shot everything on film, mainly using standard 35mm, however he did use Super 35 on Hard 8. With Boogie Nights, he used several different film types to distinguish between the 70s and the 80s. For example, for the 70s adult film scenes, he used 16mm as that was the standard at the time, whereas the ones set in the 80s were shot on video. This is in relation to the story, as in the 80s it was cheaper to shoot on video than it was to shoot on film. He used the Panavision C-series lenses, known for their graduated depth of field, flattering bokeh, and striking anamorphic flare. They also have a very organic look to them, which is why a lot of modern day cinematographers prefer them to new lenses. He shot the film on the Moviecam Compact and Panavision Panaflex Gold. His next film, Magnolia, used numerous cameras, lenses, and film stocks. Starting with the cameras, he used the Panavision Panaflex Millennium, Panavision Panaflex Gold 2, Panavision Panaflex Platinum, and partly the Path Handcrank Model 1909, which he used to stimulate the look of old silent films. We see this used in the prologue. Ellswit and Anderson saw Magnolia as an opportunity to experiment with different film stocks, hence why so many different cameras were used. Unlike Boogie Nights, the whole film was shot in 35, and they used Kodak's Eastman XX, a black and white film stock, for the opening credit sequence. They also used Kodak's EXR 100T and Vision 500T, which is known for its outstanding skin tones and colour reproduction. As for lenses, they used the Panavision Primos and both the C and E series lenses. Primos are known for their high contrast and resolution whilst having minimal veiling glare, ghosting and distortion. The E series lenses deliver overall sharpness that is naturally clean, but not as much as to make it too clinical or unnaturally sharp. Unlike the Primos, they are big lenses which make them unsuitable for Steadicam use. 
This is where the C series comes in handy, as they are more compact and lighter, suiting them perfectly for handheld and steadicam use. When it comes to punch trunk love, they again opted to use the Panavision Panaflex Platinum with the Panavision Primos and both the C and E series lenses. However, when it came to film, they decided to use Fuji instead of Kodak, using the Super F125T, F250T and F500T. The main characteristics of this film stock is the fine grain, incredibly accurate colour reproduction and outstanding sharpness. Anderson is known for his moving camera and long takes, using both dollies and steadicams to achieve this. For example, in this scene in Boogie Nights, he uses a circular dolly track to move us around the table in one continuous long shot. Another example being the three and a half minute long pool scene where we go from character to character in one continuous take, starting at the car and ending up in the pool. Ultimately, he is known for his extremely long takes, letting a scene play out and using colour to portray his character's emotions. You can see his style start to develop from his earliest film and grow to what it is today. I hope you enjoyed part 1 of how Paul Thomas Anderson shoots a scene. Next week, I'll upload part 2 where I talk about his later films from There Will Be Blood to Phantom Thread. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.